couple things to go over with you tonight. Um, we've got a Parks and Recs meeting scheduled for tomorrow night. What time is that, Wendy? Six. Six, I believe. Six o'clock. Haven't told you about that yet, have I? No. <laughs> Thank you. That's on tape. <laughs> Uh, but that'll be tomorrow night. That'll, of course, be to dis discuss our uh, fall uh, Halloween party at the park like we usually have. We usually have a good turnout for that. Um, and while we're talking about that, the, the River Park will be open for one more month. Uh, it, we'll close that up for the winter at the end of September. Uh, so while the weather is still nice and it's still open, if you want to get over there and use it, now would be the time to do, do that. Um, Wendy, do you know, did um, Jerry Johnson ever get with Junior about the flagpole? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. All right, I'll check on that again tomorrow. Trash cans in town. We've been over this and been over this and been over this. You're required to have covered trash cans to put your trash in. Your trash has to be in a bag when it goes in the can. And the cans cannot be full of water when they come to pick your trash up. So if you don't have covered cans, please get some covered cans. Um, even, you know, 35 gallons or less. Uh, and put your trash in bags so they pick it up. I talked to them today on the trash run and they have a lot of cans of full water or half full of water and that's just nasty for them to have to fool with and, and I don't blame them for not wanting to fool with, with that. So the ordinance very clearly states that your trash cans have to be covered. And I told them today, I said if they're not covered and they're full of water, don't pick it up. So, um, and they're going to start identifying to Wendy the residents that, that have those cans that are not covered and you're going to send letters out to ask them to come into compliance. We've already done that with one resident recently. Okay. Um, while we're talking about waste and what have you, um, I've been seeing a lot of things from different localities, Covington, Clifton Forge, about grass clippings in the streets and in the roads. And I asked Jared today, and Chris, you may know the answer to this, I don't know. Is this a state ordinance or law that says if you blow the grass in the street and you leave it, then you're, it's, it's a misdemeanor? I honestly do not know. Okay. But uh, it may be a state law. I heard, I seemed like I did see something where somebody had posted that. And I'll find out real quick and let you know in a minute. All right. Because I know that Covington has, has passed their ordinance. And did Clifton Forge pass one too? Or did they yeah. talked about it, right? Yeah. They talked about it. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, and, and it was uh, brought up, I, I think, on Facebook the other day that Town Iron Gate needed to be informed of this ordinance. Um, and we know what's going on in town and make sure they know no more. They've been bad about it, and um, but no more. They need to clean it up. I think it looks better when you clean it up anyway because it makes your property look better. It just looks like an unfinished job when you leave it laying out there. So, uh, what's her guys going to do? What do you mean? The tail crew when they cut up down the have to blow it back <laughs> off, off the road. <laughs> Clean it up off the road. Do they have to, do they have something to do it with? They got they a, got a backpack blower. Oh, yeah, they? yeah. And Chris, you gonna let me know about that? I'm reading right now. It is class one misdemeanor. Okay. So it is a state. Eighteen point two three twenty four. No person shall Deposit or cause to be deposited on any highway, soil, sand, mud, gravel, or other substance that's created hazard to travel in public. Breaking law is a class one misdemeanor. Punishable up to the $2,500 fine and 12 months incarceration in jail. 
Is that something, and you may not be able to answer this either, but is that something that y'all are going to start enforcing? Or? I guess it, it's a state law. It could be enforced. Okay. So just make sure that they know, use the blower, blow it back off the road. Okay. Okay. Uh, back toward the end of the last fiscal year, you came across some money through, I think, um, BML mm -hmm. that was available, and you had mentioned that there would, might be a little bit of money available through that to not only help offset the cost of the materials for the sidewalks, but to be used for the playgrounds. Right. And I think you said it was like $1,000 that we might be eligible for? Yes. Can we look into getting, see what we need to do to apply for that? Mm -hmm. um, we need some mats and things under the swings down at the playground. And if we would be eligible for that, um, that would be a good way to offset some of that expense. Okay. And I also believe that uh, more money available after the 1st of July for materials for sidewalks also, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. Do we need to take a vote to ask her to let her apply for that? No. All right. So can you look into that also? Mm -hmm. I know you got plenty to do, and I'm sorry. But <laughs> That's okay. You did, did so well getting the <laughs> other money for us. I figured you might be able to do this <laughs> too. So. Okay. okay. Um, we have a new business opening up in town. Uh, we're going to vote on the uh, business license here in just a few minutes under new business. It will be where the old uh, Sweet Magnolias was. Uh, it's a local girl opening up a restaurant in there. She, I think she will call it 220 Diner, isn't she? Uh, Twinks 220 Diner. Twinks 220 Diner. It's Twinkles K. Um, <laughs> They're going to open up. I think it's going to be open, from what I've read, seven days a week. So uh, be on the lookout for that. She wants to open, uh, actually she's wanting to open, I guess, Saturday. She said the first of the month. Yeah, but um, I talked to her today and I think it's going to be more, it's going to be a little bit longer than that. I okay. think it's going to be at least another one or two weeks. Okay. But, um, and like I said, under new business tonight, we'll... I'll ask for a motion on her, her business license. Uh, last year in the fall, we hosted uh, the intergovernmental social that each locality has been trying to, one locality has been doing it each quarter. And we kind of stepped up and took the fall quarter. Um, <clears throat> and I, I will, under new business, I'm going to ask for a vote to do that again this year. Last year we had it over at the River Park. Um, we did actually have it on the night of our work session and that created quite a bit of, of confusion uh, for some folks. So this year we won't do that. We'll do it on a completely separate night when nothing else is, is scheduled. We do have the letter and information from the governor's mansion requesting the um, ornament from the town for the tree again this year. Um, is that something that Tammy would be interested in doing again this year, Richard? I'll ask her. I'll ask her too. She's interested. All right. Let me give you this information. We've had one on there. Well, we didn't have one last year because the deadline got past us. But for the two years previously to that, we've had one on there. And uh, the ornament has to be something representative of your area and your locality, and preferably made from something from your locality. And, uh, and you know, we've been pretty pretty proud to have that on there and uh, we get recognition for that so I'd like to continue that. 
Okay, uh, last month and at the work session, Randy asked about garbage trucks, uh, and specifically our garbage truck, having to drive all the way to Covington, past Valley Ridge, and come back to the transfer station. And I reached out today to uh, John Lanford and also Susan Hammond. And there is a, a VDOT restriction for trucks traveling through Valley Ridge. I have seen the sign. I've been told that the sign is not there at this time. But you even know that there's supposed to be a sign there that says no through trucks. And that means tractor trailers, garbage trucks, etc. because of the S turn in the middle of Valley Ridge. And I was also informed today that the county trucks, county garbage trucks, other than the garbage trucks that go into Valley Ridge to pick up the trash, do not go through Valley Ridge to go to the transfer station. Um, <clears throat> All I can do is report back the information that I've been given. I know for a fact that trucks have a hard time going through there because, Chris, if you can attest to this, we got hung up behind one and you and uh, Luby were trying to get them out of there so we could get by. Remember that day? Because they were hung up. Now, Randy, you said you've got evidence that they are going through. And I was asked point blank today by Mr. Lanford that if you do have that evidence, he would like to have it and know about it so he can deal with it appropriately with his employees. Well, Mr. Lanford can do what I did. He can go up there and sit two or three hours and see for himself. Okay, so you don't want to share your information? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, but it wasn't only trash trucks. Like I told you, it was a tractor trailer, a FedEx truck. Well, was, you've got the documentation. You've got the information. Okay. You just said you don't want to share it. I did what I said I was going to do, and I reached out to the folks that put the ordinance in place. And as far as I'm concerned, if you want them to investigate it, you can call them. <clears throat> Nuisance properties in Iron Gate. I'm very happy to report uh, tonight that our nuisance ordinance has been tried in court and has been upheld. Um, we currently have one property owner in town um, who has been found guilty of maintaining a nuisance property. Um, and the judge has instructed him that the town has the authority and the right to clean that property up at his expense, either by leaning against his property or bills sent to him, correct? Since that order has been put in place, he has been working very diligently to get his property cleaned up, and he has made tremendous progress in the week that has ensued since that time. Um, so he's, he's doing what the judge has asked him to do, or told him to do, and what we've been asking him to do for a year. That brings me to the next phase of this, and there are 11, I think, other properties that have been identified in town as a nuisance property that have already gotten their first letter. We need to go back and revisit those properties and if they have not made any effort to clean up, then Jared needs to follow up with them and start the process uh, to enforce the ordinance with them. Um, that's the next step. If they have cleaned up, then I guess the next the thing to do there would be to drop them from the list, right? Yeah. Um, anything you want to add to that? 